Hey, what's up? So at the end of last year, we shipped a new ThinkMail website and the team building it had a pretty interesting workflow where design, content, everything was happening in parallel. Now, yesterday we did a team-wide presentation of this journey of building the website. We've prepared some slides and presented to the company. And I thought I'd play that back to you uh, just in case you're interested. All right, so this is the new homepage for the ThinkMill website, thinkmill.com.au if you haven't checked it out. And that's the wonderful team that I enjoyed working with on this project for these few weeks. Um, and so we iterated on a very iterative process. And what I mean is all the things from design, content, copywriting, and code happened all in parallel. And so this looks a little bit like this in practice. So that involves a lot of scrambling around and trying to figure things out, but I actually enjoy working like this. And I think it unleashes a lot of creativity uh, and definitely room for discovery. So let's start first with the content. So this is the IA or sitemap of the previous version of the ThinkMill website. You can see a fairly simple homepage about contact page and that's about it. Uh, and this is the ambition for the new website that we've released. And that doesn't feel like a lot, but each of these little tentacles that you can see here actually has a lot of ramification and there is a lot of content. So the team working on the content side of things uh, started organizing things in terms of taxonomy and content relationship and sort of think like a CMS, what belongs to where, what is related to what, etc. And so that happened in an air table. And also then in Figma, there was a lot of exploration on how to display and organize this content in a meaningful way. All of this content had to live somewhere that could be then handed over to developers to implement in the site or in a CMS. We didn't know what to use back then. And so at this stage, we decided to put them in Markdown files, which is a pretty good format uh, that non-technical people can write and technical people can implement inside a website. On the design side of things, a lot of exploration as well. You can see that sort of exploration, uh, very colorful, is drastically different from this approach uh, or this approach. And we ended up with a very large Figma artboard. This is just the tip of the iceberg, uh, exploring in all sorts of angles and possibilities to try to land on something. Once again, full brainstorming, exploring everything mode. Now to the code side of things. So we needed a stack that enables a prototyping workflow. We don't really know what we're building. We don't have content, we don't have design, or we have lots of little snippets, but we don't know if this is the final form. And so we wanted something that kind of let us uh, rapidly prototype and also pivot and change directions. In my view, what enable this prototyping workflow is Technology that is easy to learn and quick onboarding. You don't want people to have to take a course and spend a week learning something just to be able to be productive. The code needs to be easy to delete or move around because you're most definitely going to scratch some ideas, roll back, uh, change completely, throw things away. And so it needs to feel like throwaway code literally, but something that can actually scale without being rewritten after that. So from previous personal experience, I had a good idea on a stack that may help us do just that. What I suggested to the team is Astro and Tailwind CSS. Astro is a super cool framework to build websites. Uh, by default, it will build static HTML pages, but is very, very capable beyond that. Uh, so things that we liked about Astro is, first of all, remember we were talking about these Markdown files, you can consume Markdown files. But if we decided to pivot, uh, we could also consume data from a headless CMS or an API. So this felt like we could just organize lots of content and then find an easy way to pull in and display it in pages. Like I mentioned, you're not limited to HTML pages. If there's parts that require high interactivity, uh, you can use something like React, Svelte, Vue, etc. People at ThinkMill are very, very proficient with React. And I liked that uh, Astro wasn't a departure from this. You can still use React in places where it makes sense. And finally, uh, Astro has a great community and community tools like extensions to handle SEO, open graph, or image optimizations. And the community is thriving. There is a really good Discord channel. And so this gave us the confidence that we can, if we hit a roadblock, get some help and also have some fun and network on the way. Now, Tailwind CSS, if you know anything about me, this is not a surprise. Uh, but basically, what it gives you is a series of tokens for things like colors or spacing and anything else that can fit inside a scale. 
And then it gives you these utility classes like here for padding, and you can reach for this token and apply these to specific CSS properties. And that lets you prototype really quickly, but also work on one specific HTML element, which means that if you need to delete something in your markup, you can delete the styles really easily without worrying about breaking something else somewhere else. So the desired traits of a stack we were looking for was easy to learn, code easy to delete, and feels like throwaway code. And I'm pretty confident that Astro and Tailwind check these boxes. So we have a stack, where do we start? We don't have designs, we don't have content, but we can still figure out things that are likely to end up on a website. Things like a navigation with the different pages that have to be displayed. So one of the very first pull requests was to recreate this uh, sitemap we had in Whimsical uh, and create a basic navigation with just placeholder pages. And then we could progressively wire up the logic in Astro so that when markdown files are added to a directory, they get pulled into this listing. And clicking on one of these would take you to the actual case study. Again, all of this is markdown files. So that's handled by a content person who can stay focused on gathering content and not really worry about how to display it on the site. And then on the other end, the developers can grab that and display it with Astro. And so things evolved progressively and organically like this. You can see the navigation is a little bit more on brand. We start to have a series of case studies a bit more consistent. And next we started building a series of reusable UI components or what we thought would be nice to have and reuse. So you can see we have things like a card component with different possible props, uh, buttons, because every website needs buttons. And gradually we started molding this website together with more and more design, but also more and more business logic and code coming together. So here's a really interesting part. This is our news section and it's gathering data and content from different sources like articles, tweets, videos, embeds, and a lot of different things. This is just a few of the first posts. There are a lot of posts. And shout out to Tom Whitaker from the team who built this with Astro. So it's pulling different types of content via Astro, and then it's filtering it, sorting it, and it's not just used on the news feed. It's also used on the community page here and also on our blog. So the same content is being displayed and filtered differently for different contexts, which is pretty cool. If you're interested in the specifics of how this was built with Astro and TypeScript, Tom wrote an article on this and also made a YouTube video. So go check it out. So we're iterating with code in the browser, but we're also iterating with copy and content in the browser. So here's an example here. We're doing some exploration with different call to actions, and we have these little annotations for the team, but in the browser. So instead of having a Figma file with different examples, we do it straight in the website. And because some of the parts of the website are already sort of final, uh, we add these annotations to make it clear that this is not going to go in production. This is a little sample test within the website. I mentioned at the start that this parallel workflow enabled creativity and exploration. And here's a good example. So Matt Barron is a designer by trade, but he knows his way around HTML and CSS. And with a stack like Astro and Tailwind, he was able to make meaningful contributions. You can see 111 commits. And this is not just little padding tweaks. There's some pretty advanced implementation in here. And I thought that was pretty cool to be able to involve the design team within the build process. We also have Boris, the co-founder of ThinkMill and head of design, do some contributions on the website. He became one of us in the process and is now collecting little green tiles on the contribution graph. And honestly, it was pretty cool to enable and empower Boris to make changes directly on the site and witness this feeling of first contributions to a project. You know the feeling. So as you can see, there was a lot of cross-functional contributions from everyone. And I think that's awesome. It enables everyone to be creative and reach out of their comfort zone and grow. Ultimately, we arrived at something that the team is proud of. And on the 16th of December, we launched the new website and announced it on Twitter. Well done, team. The site is live, we're happy with it, but there's definitely some learnings and challenges that we observed in the journey. One of them being that a content head start would have helped the delivery a lot. Things like design and development is pretty tricky to do when you don't have content to work against. And so the learning here is that even if you evolve everything in parallel, having the content set a little bit earlier uh, front loaded is really going to help. This is somewhat related, but because we didn't have structured wireframes, we were evolving the website directly in the browser and Tailwind is sort of like a huge box of Lego blocks. You can do really structured and consistent things with it and everything clicks together. But if they're all mixed in a box, 
everyone in the team is going to grab a series of stuff and create their page with their own principles about padding and font sizes, etc. And then it creates a lot of like um, divergences, if that's a word, between the different authors of pages. But in a way, that's all right, because Tailwind is easy to delete and change and abstract components later once you know what you're building. But because we didn't know until a certain part late in the process, there was a bunch of churn doing things like this with everyone working in parallel. On the flip side, this led to really interesting conversations within the team, like what should be global typography? Can we have some base styles that apply to different blocks? What about the spacing when you want to compose multiple blocks in a page? How do you handle the container cropping and the vertical spacing? And again, when you prototype with the whole team without a clear plan, uh, we ended up with these uh, multiple, probably too many options of different containers for different use cases. Uh, that created a lot of churn, but I think also created a lot of useful learnings and discussion topics. And in terms of successes, first of all, we shipped the website. We're proud of it. It was a team effort and represents ThinkMill pretty well. And the website is performing really well. We ran some Lighthouse tests on the pages and the results are pretty flattering. This on Lighthouse tool, by the way, is awesome. So you should check it out. And yeah, we had a baseline expectation and I think this is exceeded. Uh, Astro plays a huge role in this, in providing all the tools you need to have a site that is super performant. Search impressions are up too. Uh, this is the old website and you can see launch at the late November, this steady climb. So this is doing something that we were hoping that it does. And finally, building this site got us really fired up for the future. We've barely scratched the surface of what we want or can do with this stack and the steam. And our minds are all going something like this right now. And yeah, the future is bright. We're gonna continue building cool things. And I think that's it. Thank you for checking it out. Say yeah.